in Canada because a boot. Oh, wow. It's a boot. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it's Jeff back here with Show Trust Garage. Um, taking a little break from the uh, going project. I'll be, you know, picking away at certain things. We're currently uh, carburetors. Um, well, I'm waiting for some rebuild kits for those and a couple other rods and ends. But I am going to start painting on the going. So I've got some Scotch Brite and we'll shine up the you know top of the engine a little bit and get the aluminum painted. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the factory uh, aluminum paint colory silvery thing for now. Uh, I'd like to maybe do it a like a darker, I don't know, charcoal. Not charcoal, but there's some engine paints that are like a, yeah, kind of like a charcoal. Anyway, so we'll, uh, for now, it's just going to get the brush. The rear shocks have got to come off. I'm really debating on whether I'm going to dump the, the coolant at this point. Um, but there's a there's a plate in there, and I'll show you when I get back to the Goldwing project anyway. But what, what I'm going to get at and what I'm not going to be able to get at over there. But that all aside, today we're actually looking at the little XT250. So you guys have seen this on the Trail Trash ADV channel. This is Colin's uh, 1980 uh, XT250. So this is a G model. Uh, I believe it's the first gen of the 250. We have a... I think it's a J model, possibly. Anyway, that's the 84 over there. I have i don't know if I've shown you guys that yet or not, but thats uh, we don't have a title for that frame, so I don't know what we're going to do, but basically it's its a—it's an updated version of this. It's, the, it's a very short interim generation between this generation and the current generation that you can buy, at, you know, from your Yamaha dealer right now. Like, it's, it's stayed the same all the way up through from the 90s. So, um, yeah, that was only up for a few years in between those two models, this model and that, and that model. Rambling aside, what are we doing with this? Well, <laughs> it starts good, it idles good, it warms up good, um, but as soon as you start to get on the throttle, it starts to break up. And I don't know if it's a fuel delivery problem or a spark electric uh, uh, electric problem. So uh, Colin has been working at it for, well, all last summer he was working at it, and he really wanted to do this himself, and so I gave him some feedback here and then, but I've never really seriously had a look at it. and. This winter, um, we got the KLX back to him, so I'm going to be poking at this now. We moved this back up, and uh, I'm going to see if I can actually go at it. So I, we got it up on the trailer the other day, and I got it cleaned up a little bit, and um, I discovered that the bolt for the kickstand was broken. I'd say she probably broke and bent uh, on the on the way up, maybe. I, I don't know. It wasn't resting on this, but whatever. Um, so we'll have to try to find a new bolt for that, and we'll try to fix this. But the other thing is, I'm gonna get a strip down. There's um, well, without taking you around, there's a, there's the turn signal relay there. It's just kind of dangling, and you guys are probably not in frame. Let me just bend you down a little bit. Yeah, we, to, to eliminate a spark, possible spark issue, um, we're gonna we're gonna take apart the. Um, I'm gonna take apart the wire right here. I'll take you off the stand and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So. I don't, we've got spark at low, so we got spark, we got spark. So it could be the fact that the coil is heating up, but it's not necessarily doing it when it's overly warm. So I don't suspect that the coil is breaking up after heats because it's fine at low RPM. Not to say it couldn't be the coil, but that's, I'm not, I'm, I'm more, I'm, my gut's kind of more leaning towards a, a vacuum leak, but we've kind of replaced all the rubber and the, the intake boot and all the, the typical um, culprits there. So, but as you can see, we got the loom kind of hanging outside of the, the frame. So uh, Colin just, he's had to clean up some things and make patches and there's that kind of dangling and it will short out on some metal. So I'm going to try to clean all that up and reroute the wiring in and clean some connectors and just make sure that we don't have any obvious uh, electrical issues. We'll pull the carb. Um, there's, this carb has an accelerator pump. It's this little thing right here. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that that's in working order. Now it seems to be because what the accelerator pump does is it gives a squirt of uh, fuel when you first crack the throttle, and it has decent throttle response. So I'm that usually means that the accelerator pump is working properly. But I'm going to go through it anyway because a lot of people online seem to think that the carbs will never work right in this bike if the accelerator pump is not working exactly as it's supposed to. So we're going to investigate that. So it'll kind of be picking away. I'd like to get this done sooner than later. Um, but uh, it is going to take a little while. Um, so we got to get around here. Today I'll probably put you back in the stand. I'm going to do a time lapse. When I say tear down, I'm just going to get 
see it off the tank off so I can get at the wiring loom and get a little easier to get at the carb. And we'll clean up a little, a few little things that, um, just to satisfy my uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. So yeah, so enjoy the time lapse and uh, I'll bring you guys back when I kind of get done uh, with all of that, okay? Welcome back. So I cut the time lapse off there in a little bit. So we get the carb out. Um, so this is the accelerator pump I was telling you guys about, and it basically connects here, so that when you twist this, it shoves this down. And if you'll notice right here, when you hit this, squirts tire. Anybody familiar with like mo uh, automobile carbs are going to know all about your accelerator pumps. So we do have a little bit of crud down in there. So. Well, uh, I must be getting past the, the fuel filter. Anyway, <clears throat> I think I said on the previous carb videos, just in case you missed those or whatever, I use brake clean a lot. I don't use a lot of carb cleaner. Um, carb cleaner does cut crud, especially like varnished fuel better, but it's hard on rubber parts and it's toxic or not, not toxic, but a lot of fumes and stuff. So, so basically I'm probably not going to film this whole carb going over like I'm really I don't know what's wrong with it I'm really just kind of looking at stuff I'm not familiar with the carb this model um, I can't stress enough you know having a or a pair manual uh, Colin just dropped this off for me so we'll have a look at it I got to get some specs and stuff out of it because main the main thing I'm looking for is when you got surging at MIG throttle okay. um, it's probably a vacuum leak a lot of other problems you're going to have with a, um, you know, with carbs, like it, they're either too lean or too rich or whatever. There, there'll be probably be more constant problems. Like it's not going to idle or whatever. But surging um, is probably a too, too rich or too lean at the topper end. Like not, not a top end main jet, but um, I'm not explaining this very well. The, the needle jet. Okay. So basically, this is your main jet right here. Underneath that, there's an emulsion tube and the needle. If I put this up, you can see the needle in there. Okay. So the taper on the needle and how much air and fuel mixture can get up around that needle basically is uh, where your mid throttle to, to wide open throttle is. Once you hit wide open throttle, the needle's all the way up. It doesn't affect anything and it's your main jet, the, the size of this jet. The, just the specific size of that jet is what what happened but this surging is happening at mid throttle so i know it's not the main jet it's got to be the needle jet or it's nothing to do with the carb per se the settings it's a vacuum leak which is kind of what i feel like it is um now this this carb i said i'm not familiar with this carb but it is quite similar to the xt500 carb and one of the outside of the the boots and it would have to be the uh intake so you know if if it's if we got a vac if we got a leak here it's not going to affect this as much um, because it'll it'll affect the velocity flow a little bit but it's not it shouldn't cause a a, a really bad surge you'll just get um, you it could cause a bit of a lean or or a rich condition most likely a lean because you got more air coming in than you got fuel um, because this is gonna it's gonna be pulling fuel in past but the worst thing is it's dirty fuel or dirty air sorry did I say fuel I meant air. Um, it'll be dirty air because it's not being filtered through the, the uh, air box filter. But the main problem is if you've got a, a vacuum leak here, when you crack the throttle, a vacuum is created to pull air through as the piston travels down. Um, this is going to cause a bigger issue on this side um, because this will really affect your air fuel mixture worse than, worse than this does. Um, and so you want a new rubber boot. You want a good seal here where the rubber boot attaches to the... Uh, the engine, um, Colin has replaced that. It's nice and pliable. It's good. I have no reason to think that there's a, a, a bad seal there. Um, we had done um, carb cleaner tests before where you spray carb cleaner around the boot. And if the, your engine idle changes, then you know that it's leaking and it, that passed. Um, now, I didn't do that this time. I don't. I didn't have any carb cleaner. You can do it with some propane too, and I do have some of that. But uh, I just assumed that this, this ex and you shouldn't assume, however, 
this this has been persistent past that. So I know that chances are that you know the, the problem has been the same. It wasn't the car boot before. Then it's probably still not the car boot now. Like there's something else going on. So, but if I if I go through this and I can't find it when I reseat this all, I'll probably retest that. We'll do the I'll do a leak test. But back to this, I have suspicions that possibly that this shaft that goes through into the car body. This is where I was having a problem on the XT500, and it was very difficult to solve. Now, Colin rebuilt this carburetor. That's a new seal in there, but we're just going to check it anyway um, and, and to make sure that everything's there. The other thing that could be happening at surging is it could be a fuel delivery problem. Now, I don't like these 90-degree fuel. Um, there's just a lot of air bubbles in them, and the way this thing kind of hangs out the side... Plus, it, as you can see, there was there was still some fairly large chunks in there. So I'm not sure how great of a job this is doing. Usually, the ones that have got the little charcoal kind of filters in them sometimes work better. I may end up replacing this just because. Um, I don't have anything else on hand right now, but I could swing through sometime tomorrow. And maybe tomorrow morning I'll run out and grab something. But in any way, in any case, um, fuel delivery problem could be float height. So we're going to double check that. That's the other thing I'm going to look at. That feels to me like that float is not set correctly. That feels like it's up way too far. But we'll see what the things what the things say. So if that's the case, then what happens is if fuel gets up like this and it closes it off, right? So if this is if this kit only goes there when it closes off and the fuel fuel level in the bowl is too low, then it may be having a hard time pulling fuel. Now, that main jet hangs down pretty far. That's pretty deep. Well, but it is possible that a float level can be can affect that. So we'll double check that. If that float level is off by quite a bit, then that could be our issue. I'm definitely going to adjust it. We'll slam the car back in and then retest the bike. Retesting is a little hard because we're supposed to get a big snowstorm. Um, I probably won't have this all back together in a point where I can ride the bike again. I'll have to wait for a day where it's a little thawed and have to get the bike back out to see if any of this actually makes a difference. But yeah, we're going to do what we can do here today anyway. So you, there's lots of car videos out there. Um, I don't think you, I need to film like everything. I just wanted to show you the, well, you know what, while we got you here, this pump is obviously working because it, it is squirting fuel up. But I do want to make sure and just quickly look at the diaphragm. So we'll just see the diaphragm. And the other two things is, is checking that, that, that throttle slide. If I find something, I'll bring you guys back. But there's no sense in, in um, sitting here. You guys watching everything. It's going to be a long, it'll be a long, boring video. Okay, so we got almost got this off. Now, I do have JIS bits in here, Japanese Industrial Standard bits. Um, if you, if you, these little screws and stuff, you can see they're all monkeyed. Um, and that's because people use Phillips on them. All right. So, all right. So there's there is some crud in here. It's, it's just kind of dirty, but I suppose that's open underneath there, huh? Weird. I wouldn't think that would be open like that. But you can see, you kind of see right. Can you see right through it? That would let crud up in there to get around all this. That's probably what's cruddy. Plastic. So anyway, so that bar it pushes on that diaphragm. And it sounds got fuel coming out, so it sounds it sounds good. Um, I don't know if I want to pry all this up because it the rubber seems pliant. I can hear it sucking, so I would say it's probably fine. Yeah. See where that goes down in. So it comes up through and comes up through here. Yeah. I, I wonder if somebody sealed that with some gunk or something. Because it shouldn't really be that tough to come off. But I don't want to pry it. I don't have a rebuild kit for that. It seems to be functioning. And really that shouldn't affect it mid-throttle. Like the, the pump should not be affecting that. I can't imagine that it... It would affect anything so i think i'll just leave it for now 
I see somebody's tried to get this out because you can see where they've monkeyed it a little bit. Something else, um, so this is a carb sink tool for a multi, multi bank carburetor setup. But I really like it because it's got a very, very square, you see that? A very, very square tip. And it's really good for carb parts because it's not like a regular standard screwdriver. It's nice and square and flat. It doesn't have any rounded edges or tapered edges. So it seems to fit down in these jets quite well. But as you can see, oh yeah. It looks like there's a check ball in there. It's dirty. Yeah. So looks like there's a little check ball in there. And so so the the uh fuel squirts up and it must it must move the check ball a little bit. Because I just I lightly probed it in here and I can kind of move that check ball around a little bit. So I would say that's what's going on. Uh I've read the forums say that the, the check if the accelerator pump's not working properly, it'll affect other areas of the carb. Yeah, I can't, I don't have anything to argue with them about it, but it just seems odd that that's the case. So, like it should only affect right off idle, which is where it's supposed to affect. But anyway, we will go with that for now. Figure out where that how that going on there now. <laughs> Boom. Like this. Yeah. And you guys. I don't need to see any of this either. Alright, so what I will do is um I'll bring you guys back when if I find something. Like I said, the the biggest things are I'm gonna check that throttle sleeve um or throttle plate shaft. And I'll check the float height and just to see. And I'll just give the jets a really quick, uh, quick look. But I doubt I'm going to find anything in the jets because it, it starts and idles and warms up nice. So I don't expect to find anything odd with the uh, the pilot jet circuit or anything like that. Okay. All right. See ya. All right. I brought you back. Um, so there's two, uh, there's two ways to check your float level. And uh, the first way is with the carb all together, okay? So let's just pretend this is the bottom of the carb. Basically, you hook up a, a line to this, this tube here, and it's supposed to be six millimeters. And with the carb perfectly level, undo the screw, and then the, the, the fuel line will fill. Basically, boom, then you put that there, and the level should be, when you hold this like this, the float height should be about there is where your fuel level should be and that way you know that it's shutting off when it's supposed to now yeah you're supposed to be mounted on the bike the bike's supposed to be level all that stuff then you got to pull the car back out and it, that's a pain in the ass to do it that way you can sometimes do it on the bench if you you uh you, you know use a vice to clamp the clamp the carb and do it that way um the way i prefer to do it and they do make a special tool for this but I just do it this way is you kind of let that float sit the shit It needs to sit on the needle, but it doesn't need to compress the needle and the needle is right in I don't know if you can see that but a little thing in there anyway So it needs to sit on it, but it shouldn't be compressing it and you measure from the base of the carb to the top of here base of the carb to the top Okay, so when we look at our little dial gauge, we're at 25 6 7 8 Almost eight and a half so 28 and a half millimeters that Seems way too big for me. Um, I cannot find a setting. The climber manual that I've got only gives this method. Okay, it does not tell me what the float height is supposed to be. Um, now on the XT250 it does, or the, the XT200, XT225 it does. It says should be, I think it was like 25 millimeters or something like that, or 23 millimeters. Uh, a lot of bikes are between 22 to 25 uh, give or take, you know, a, a millimeter. I've never seen 
I've never seen one more than 25 millimeters. Now that doesn't mean there isn't one out there. I just haven't seen it. So when I, as soon as I took this apart, I said, that looks like it's too high to me. And it, it does. I'm going to set it down to 24 millimeters. And um, yeah, we're going to see what, if that changes anything. I mean, the, worst, the only thing it'll do is make things worse, I guess. And then we'll have to pull it back off again. So basically what you do is this tang is right there. And again, that tang is bent quite a bit. Like it, I just, it shouldn't be bent like that. So, but basically you put the screwdriver in here and you bend the tang up. Burp. Right, now that looks more like what it should be. You should almost want this arm of the float parallel with the base here. Now just eyeballing it like that, let's see where we're at. Yeah. So let's pull this off. Bang, 24 right on the button. Um, yeah, to me, that seems more reasonable. And so what could have been happening there is a stool, uh, fuel starvation issue. So with, the, with the, the float shutting the fuel off so quick, the float bowl's not filling up to where it needs to, so the float bowl doesn't have enough fuel to, um, to, supply, the, to supply the demand for the carb, right? And re judging by the amount of air bubbles I was seeing in this filter, this, this thing as it was hanging out the side, uh, I'm not surprised. Like, there was a lot of air bubbles in there, so it felt like it was trying to suck fuel faster than maybe this this filter would let fuel through um, now it always looked like there was fairly other than the bubbles going up through the piece of fuel tube that was going from here to here like this piece of fuel tube this this piece was going up to the the um, the tank so this piece of fuel tube here always seemed to be full of fuel except the bubbles going up through um, but that's again that's uh, yeah I don't know I don't like that I don't think that was right now I don't know if I want to break this thing in down any further. I don't know if I want to tear this all off. Maybe we'll have a quick little look. Anyway, all right. So again, a lot of this will be similar to the top. You'll see the slide in there. A lot of that's going to be similar to my XT500 video over on a Trail Trash ADV, unless it moves over here, in which it'll be here. Um, okay, again, so I'll bring you back if I find anything um, important or I have any... Uh, burn your wisdom to share with you okay hey it's jeff trail trash garage uh in the uh editing booth here i'm just finishing up the xt 250 carb video and during editing um i stopped the carb and i realized the next footage that i've got is actually a little more a little farther ahead and uh, i just wanted to cap this video off uh with this little message because um debated on whether I to put this video out because I don't really have a resolution to the carb issue. There's some more things we're going to do to the bike and I, I'm probably going to have those videos up over the next few weeks. So it, it plus it's winter here, the weather's not great and um, it's going to be a while before I can get out and actually test that part. But I want to keep the videos going because there's other things we do to the bike uh, before I can actually get the bike out and testing too, uh, even after the carb goes back into the bike. So uh, the accelerator pump, it, it is a check ball in there and uh, it was clean, the check ball was moving. Um, I was able to blow through it. Uh, air was coming through one way, it wasn't going through the other way. I still don't, don't know why that membrane was really stuck on there, um, but I didn't want to tear it off. And actually Colin did bring up a, a rebuild kit. He has a second one that has a new membrane if I have to go and revisit that accelerator pump. But like I said in the video, that accelerator pump really just gives it a squirt when you first open the throttle up. It really shouldn't affect anything uh, above, you know, when you first open that throttle. So at idle, it's the pilot circuit. Uh, when you just come off idle, that's when the uh, the needle jet starts to take over. And that's when that accelerator pump hits because those carbs had a dead spot uh, just off idle. So as before the, the needle jet takes over, there was a little dead spot so even in the xt500 they the later carb revisions wanted to uh, clean up that little dead spot so they added the accelerator pump and that's exactly what accelerator pump does in your car to, and everything it it really helps you you get from the pilot circuit into the the other main circuits on the uh, on the car 
So I know it kind of sucks to have this video up and not have a resolution to that because as of this editing, I still don't have that tested. Um, and it's going to be a little while. The weather really needs to, to, to get a, a thaw. And that usually happens sometime, you know, toward the ends of January, February, we have a week of thawed uh, weather and the roads are clear enough to get out and get the get the bike properly tested. Mm -hmm. And I'll revisit that and, and make sure that I, I do get a follow-up video done with a resolution on this car video and, and I'll put them together in the playlist on the thing. But until then, I want to get the car video up uh, just to keep the videos coming. Um, I got lots of gold wing footage to film, so we'll get through to that. And I'll, they'll be up over the next few weeks as well. But uh, yeah, enjoy the car video for now uh, and uh, we'll get you an update. That'll be a little suspense uh, to the resolution, but uh, we will get the resolution filmed. All right. For Jeff, Trail Trash Garage. We'll catch you in the next video. I'm in Canada because... A boot! <laughs> Not a boot! <laughs> Sorry.